Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of Format Podcast Live. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, whenever you uh, whenever you get here, make sure you uh, go ahead and uh, let us know in the chat where you're coming in from and uh, make sure you hit that like button. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. So got a pretty interesting show for you here today. Got, uh, as you can see, got some uh, interesting topics. This is going to be uh, pretty much all NBA here. And uh, obviously the NBA playoffs started today. So um, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. And that's going to be the focus of a lot of the sports talk for the next, I guess, two months or whatever. But um, definitely got some interesting topics today and, and looking forward to discussing those with you. Uh, make sure if you hopping in. Um, that you let us know where you're coming in from and make sure you hit that like really appreciate it um all right so the first uh well matter of fact before we get started uh you know what time it is let's make sure we do this and knock out the particulars then we'll get started if you're here on youtube and you haven't already please make sure you go ahead click that like that subscribe that notification bell make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel if you want the audio only version of the podcast open up your audio podcast platform hit the search bar type in the format podcast and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't wait so if you know me you know, I'm a Boston Celtics fan, diehard. I say it all the time. I was a Boston Celtics fan when Larry Bird was waving his towel in the garden. Not when ML Carr was waving his towel in the garden. I'm not quite that old, but when Larry Bird was, right? That's when I first, first started getting into basketball, and I just thought that was cool. Um, so, uh, Boston Celtics and uh, Paul Pierce is one of the greatest Celtics of all time, and obviously, he is a Hall of Famer, and um, he's one of the probably a top 10 small forward of all time maybe top eight depending on how your list shakes out i think we could probably get him in the top eight small forwards of all time but anyway um paul pierce now has a podcast and of course he's on ticket in the truth regularly with uh, uh kevin garnett his former celtics teammate and his friend um but now he's got his own pod of course everyone's got their own pod right the format podcast and everybody else <laughs> but um yeah so he's doing his thing and this is interesting right because paul pierce um throughout a big part of his career basically from the time lebron entered well not the time he entered the league but um when paul pierce formed up with the uh big three in boston and lebron was really um moving into his physical prime uh he and lebron were big time rivals and so you didn't hear a lot of positive talk about lebron from paul pierce right because these guys were they were on the floor against each other. They were competing at an extremely high level. And from a physical standpoint, at the least, right, there's no reason that Paul Pierce should have been anywhere near LeBron. He should not have been able to compete with LeBron. Now, on an offensive toolkit, on a skill set, on a footwork, on a just on a quote unquote bag. I know LeBron hates hearing about a bag, probably because his bag is almost empty. But anyway, um, from a bag standpoint, Paul Pierce is far superior to LeBron James. Physically, no. Can he do like the physical things LeBron can do? And was he able to carry a team the same way? No, but Paul Pierce, he used to go at it with LeBron, right? And so um, obviously when uh, Pierce was uh, in Boston and LeBron was in Cleveland, um, and he was doing his thing. And then of course, uh, uh, LeBron went to Miami and Paul Pierce was still going at him. Now, by that time, um it's funny because uh at that time i think the celtics average age was 34 and a half or 35 years old and of course the heatles were all in their physical prime so real 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 quick side note there it's always funny to me how uh lebron fans talk about how michael jordan had to wait till the pistons got old to get past them hmm. so when when the Bulls broke through, the Pistons were an average age. And I probably said this on a few other shows before, but let me remind you, the Pistons were an average age of 29 years old. And when LeBron went and joined up with the Heatles and then got past the big three Celtics, the big three Celtics were an average age of 34 and a half, 35 years old. So how come we don't hear the same things from LeBron fans about, well, LeBron had to not only go and join up with two other Hall of Famers, two other all pros in their primes, to beat an old Celtics team. We never hear that. But anyway, that's a different story, right? We're not even talking about that today. I just figured I'd throw it out there because, you know, I want to show you how you guys do. Anyway, 
Um, so Paul Pierce, one of LeBron James' biggest rivals, both with uh, Miami and with Cleveland. So those guys used to go at it, right? If you remember the 2008 playoffs, um, semifinals, game seven, uh, I think LeBron James had 45 points, Paul Pierce had 42, and it was one of those shootouts for the ages, right? If you ask me, it was right there with the legendary um, Larry Bird, Dominique Wilkins shootout in game seven of the Eastern Conference semifinals in 88, 87? 87 or 88 but the point is it was one of those all-time legendary playoff duels and you love to see those so anyway paul pierce is now long retired he is a hall of famer he's an nba analyst on fox sports one and of course as i mentioned he's a podcaster and of course lebron james is still rolling along and he is continuing to set milestone after milestone and he is doing amazing things right okay lebron fans you heard that lebron is doing amazing things i'm giving him credit okay cool so uh, Paul Pierce has been extremely critical of LeBron uh, throughout his career, both as a player and then uh, as a as a broadcaster after he retired. Now, this is interesting, right? Because all of a sudden we're hearing the tunes of Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett change in regards to LeBron. Now, um, you guys heard Mel from the Man Down Sports podcast. He just called in a little while ago and he was on the show um, a while back, maybe a month or two ago. And one of the things that I was talking to him about was kind of how these guys talk about the modern NBA once they retire. And one of the things he said is, and I'll never forget this, because I, I hadn't really looked at it this way. Mel said, when you join the NBA media after you retire, you have a certain responsibility to help to grow the game. And I hadn't really thought about that. All I'm thinking about is, okay, you join the NBA media, you were a player, if you were a, an outstanding player, like a Hall of Famer type or whatever, just be honest and tell it how it is and really you know basically keep it a buck right not not act ignorant but you know keep keep it 100 and tell it how it is and be honest about what you're seeing what's going on what's happening in the game etc and mel told me nah you have a responsibility to help to grow the game so you can't be but so honest about things right and i was like hmm. i hadn't looked at it that way right so i guess in a way almost that's a kind of nice way of saying that responsibility to help grow the game means that to some extent you also got to push the narratives and uh, that's really got to suck if you know better than what you're saying right so um paul pierce was on his podcast uh earlier this week and he said something that completely shocked me like i get it he's not going quite as hard as he used to um no did he and but i will say that i was totally shocked when he said this check it out and we'll come back and talk about it. Yes, say, I said, look, if LeBron win a chip this year, undisputed goal, what you think about that? This year, as a team that's in a no, in a normal year without the plan, would not make the playoffs. Can't if they, the if he takes Sober. this, if he he can't be the goal. No, because Damn. this is why. This is why. It's like you he can his accolades will stand. He will be he will be on the hill. And he's gonna have so much things to say about his career. He's all time. Nah, he gonna have so much things. But going Jordan down. was another thing. He was so far head and shoulders. He was like the truest thing we've had in sports, like Mayweather. Like when Mayweather said, if "You gonna bet on me? You'll be rich by now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta bet on Jordan every time. Yeah, Jordan was the truest thing we ever seen. Once he freaked, first of all, Damn. look at his elevation. He he elevated. He stayed with that franchise. He rode it. He rode it. He rode it. They got some young pieces. Look at Scottie Pippen got his train to so start working. If he bring, if he, he brings, lifted everybody. So, so, so like, damn, if you say LeBron brought a championship, he's already brought a championship to three franchises, which I don't know no other franchise player who's done that. Not a franchise player. Yeah, Players then moved around. Moved Ain't nobody around. just like, as soon as he got there. This is a new thing. Contender. It's a new day. These guys, like what Kobe did to get his five, he breathed, he, he, he breathed life into this You got Kobe over LeBron? Yes. Ooh. I do. So I'm not LeBron, a numbers guy. So LeBron I not him. only can't be the GOAT, he can't be over Kobe. No. So where does that put Kobe in the conversation because this for, is why. for GOAT? Let me tell you, this is how I, I don't do my GOAT on stats and all this. I do my stuff on if we line up, if we line up, who are you taking? If does I got Kobe have up, an argument for GOAT? No. But if LeBron can't be the GOAT, but you argue, there's an argument for him to go, but you have Kobe over LeBron, why doesn't Kobe have an argument for GOAT? 
Kobe is the greatest copycat artist of all time. Wow. So I heard these comments and I'm like, am I in like some bizarro world or something? Paul Pierce actually lobbying for LeBron James as the GOAT? Like, I really could not believe it. Paul Pierce, he started out and he started off by admitting, you know, he's been a big LeBron critic. Maybe not in that particular clip, but um, earlier on, he, he said it. He's been a big LeBron critic. And so I'm sitting here and I'm listening. And then the more I listen and the more I think about it, process it, and try to figure out how am I going to address this? It's going to make a great podcast topic and all that. That's when I thought about what my man Mel said. And that is, again, that you have a responsibility to help grow the league, which is weird, though, because at this point, LeBron is on his way out. So why is why is pushing the narrative, which in my estimation is a faulty narrative? And there's a lot of easy ways to demonstrate that. But why is pushing that narrative? helping the league grow when LeBron's on his way out like if you want to talk about talk about one of the younger players talk about you know obviously he's not in the GOAT discussion but a, a Wemben Yama who clearly is is a, is a total freak or you know some of the Ant Edwards or some of these other guys but yeah um so Paul Pierce saying that I again I was totally shocked by it so um <clears throat> this is the thing so I'm, I'm listening to uh this stuff about LeBron becoming a GOAT so now the latest argument is should lebron win this championship championship number five that would be 11 trips to the finals and he would still be under 500 mind you still under 500 i don't know how or why we keep managing to gloss over that but he'd still be under 500 which means he's lost more times than he's won on the biggest stage more finals losses than any other mvp but anyway that is what it is so here's the deal when it comes to the lebron james goat arguments why do we keep changing what the quote-unquote criteria is we've never seen this with anyone else right who are uh probably the only other two guys that were legitimately in the greatest of all time arguments well i guess if you're older you will probably say wilt or maybe oscar i've heard oscar from some of the older people but probably wilt and for me as amazing as he was he's disqualified for the same reason lebron is he's two and four in the nba finals right so when you lose that much more than you win on the big stage that's a problem for me so I can't have you there. So there's Oscar. Uh, I'm sorry, there's Wilt. And uh, there's Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right? And so these are the other guys in the, who would likely be in the GOAT discussion. And so the arguments for LeBron, like the goalposts keep moving, and I can't figure out why. So first, it was obviously, you know, he's got tremendous ability, blah, blah, blah. So you got to win championships, okay? So he won championships, but we ignore the losing. So I, I don't know how that worked. I just talked about it. So then there's, oh, well, uh, he's got to be the GOAT. And he said it himself because he came back from 1-3 down against Golden State in the 2016 finals. Now, no one is ever going to get me to believe that that stimulus package the NBA gave <laughs> Gold, uh, Cleveland with the BS Draymond suspension did not play a massive role. That series was going to be over in five had Draymond not been suspended. And I think anyone who knows basketball knows that. But the NBA, you know, they're like, come on, man, we can't we can't let that go like that. Don't get me wrong. Draymond, <clears throat> he allowed himself to get uh, suckered into a position where he could do something stupid and then get suspended, especially when he had, you know, narrowly missed getting suspended uh, throughout um, earlier in the season, or earlier in the playoffs. But anyway, so there's that coming down from one to three that supposedly made him the GOAT. Uh, then there's. Uh, becoming the all-time scoring champion and passing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the, in the NBA. So this is interesting because I, I did a show about this a couple of weeks ago. I never heard anyone who says that LeBron is the GOAT because he's the scoring champion say the same thing about Kareem. So I'm wondering, how is it that when Kareem was the scoring champion, most of these people who call LeBron the GOAT weren't calling Kareem the GOAT. They were, calling, they were finding some other reason to say that LeBron was the GOAT. But then when LeBron passed Kareem, all of a sudden, that makes him the GOAT, okay? Then there's uh, LeBron is the all-time leading scorer in professional basketball history past the great Oscar Schmidt. If you don't know who he is, look him up. Um, LeBron James, uh, again, I don't say this to take anything away from it. It was an incredible, incredible accomplishment, and he is still putting distance between himself and the number two people, whether it's in the NBA or whether it's uh, in professional basketball, period. And I am sure... He is very intent on trying to put all these stats out of reach. Um, stat padding, you call it what you want to, but at the end of the day, he's doing it. And then 
uh, LeBron fans are saying, well, he's the GOAT because he's the first to get 40,000 points, 11,000 rebounds, 11,000 assists. Those, again, absolutely phenomenal, incredible numbers. But when did purely statistical accomplishment make someone the GOAT? I, I don't really get that because if you want to talk stats making someone the GOAT, then let's go back to the old guy, Wilt, who still owns, um, I want to say, uh, 74 74 records in the nba record book and like 70 of them or 68 of them are individual and so just a few of them are shared so if you want to talk statistical accomplishment it's either will chamberlain or michael jordan or kareem abdul jabbar so again now now stats make lebron the goat okay now we're hearing paul pierce saying well if he wins that fifth championship well that's what's that's what's going to make him the undisputed goat how is this working i just want to know how is this working we have never seen this type of goal pose moving before i don't understand how i don't understand why everything has to change and shift and move for lebron whether it's his rosters whether it's the reasoning whether it's the argument for why or what or how he's the goat i don't think he's the goat but you get the point why why does this work that way we've never seen it work that way for anyone else doesn't that tell you something doesn't that tell you very simply that he's not what they're trying to tell you he is they're trying to sell you a bill of goods i just don't get it um you look at the kareems and the kobe's and the michael jordans right to me the biggest difference between lebron james and those guys is that those guys tried to master the game master themselves master their skill sets and master the game and now lebron it seems to me has tried to think about every possible way to get there without mastering the game. Whether, like we said, whether it's the statistical achievements, whether it's stacking teams to try to win championships and grease the skid, he's, he, it seems like he's trying to find every way around it besides actually locking in and becoming the best possible basketball player. Because when Kareem tried to become, or worked to become the best possible basketball player, what did that end up with? 10 trips to the finals and six championships and uh, six MVPs, right? Michael Jordan tried to become the greatest basketball player that he could be. And what did that end up with? That ended up with six NBA finals trips, six championships, six finals MVPs, a defensive player of the year, 10 scoring championships, blah, blah, blah. I could go on and on. Kobe tried to become the best player he could be it, it started out somewhat as mimicking michael jordan but why was he mimicking michael jordan because michael jordan was the best so he said if i mimic this guy and i master myself and master what he mastered then i can be the best because i believe i can outwork him right so there's that and what did that lead to for kobe that led to five championships that led to an mvp that led to a few scoring titles that led to nine times first team all nba defense blah 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 right so all of these things if you just master yourself and try to master the game everything else will come along with you you didn't hear any of those guys trying to control the media spin and trying to uh have the media uh play the role to to tell everyone how great they were you didn't have them out here telling everyone how great they were so on and so forth all that wasn't necessary because why they focused on mastering the game and if you master the game everything else comes along right they didn't try to win by stacking the deck they didn't try to win by controlling the media they didn't try to uh, stick around to accumulate stats right they just tried to become the best player possible and letting the chips fall where they may because they knew that if they did that at the end of the day they would be satisfied with where history placed them that is the difference between lebron and those guys so he may have a bunch of finals runs and he may have four championships and he might even get five i don't think so but it's possible and he has a bunch of incredible stats that maybe in their totality no one will ever reach or no one will ever surpass and he's got an all-time all-time great career you won't hear me argue that you've never heard me argue that but the majority of current nba players still believe michael jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time so what does that tell you what does that tell you all right so uh before we get out here i'm gonna give you an opportunity i would love to hear from anybody on this who um wants to talk about uh paul pierce and his thoughts on lebron james and if he wins a fifth championship this year especially coming from being that number seven seed 
and uh, winning that and uh, having to be in the play-in, which says, uh, what did Paul Pierce say? That uh, if there wasn't a play-in, they wouldn't even have made the playoffs this year. So if he should come up and lead that team to a championship, then he's the greatest player of all time, which oddly enough, I don't even know how that would be the case because Anthony Davis is the best player on that team, but so be it. But I would love to I would love to hear um, what anyone has to say about that. The number is 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. I'm going to uh, give a couple minutes and um, hopefully I get some call in. I want to hear from some LeBron fans on this, really. If there's any LeBron fans in the chat, please call me and, and give me your thoughts on what I had to say. Give me your thoughts on what Paul Pierce had to say. I definitely want to hear from you. And uh, if not, then we'll go ahead and get out of here. But in, in the interim, I will go ahead and uh, just wait a couple minutes and hopefully I get a couple calls on that because I definitely want to hear from you. No LeBron fans want to go at me tonight? Come on now, where are you? Where are you? A lot of you have some interesting things to say in the comments when I uh, post these videos on YouTube. I would love to hear from you. Where are you? Where are you? Come on now. All right, well, I guess that's going to be it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thanks so much for those of you who joined me. I appreciate you. If you haven't already, please go ahead and make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel and give me that like. And uh, if you got anything to say, leave it in the comments section. I try to get back to every comment I possibly can. So I definitely want to hear from you. Obviously, I'll be uh, dropping new videos again during the week. Um, I'm going to cut this one up. So um, if you don't want to watch the entire thing, you can get um, just the different segments. But um, I'll also be, as I said, dropping other videos during the week. Thursday, we do Throwback Thursdays. And talk about some players from previous eras whether it's football or basketball um maybe even boxing or what have you um and uh any other sports stories that come up in during the week i definitely try to get on those but i will be back uh actually i won't be back um next saturday night definitely got a family thing going on so uh no live show next saturday night but i will try to get out as much content as i can this week prior to that so yeah i guess that's it i'm not hearing from anybody so Thanks for joining me once more, and uh, that's it. I'm out. Peace.